I'm Mark Hallman. I'm the owner of the Congress House Studio here in Austin, Texas. I'm a record producer. Um, I've lately gotten into mastering in the past five years. I uh, am lucky enough to own a Portico 2 channel, not only one, but two. I use it in recording, I use it in mixing and mastering. I have been doing this a long time. I started with Carol King as a record producer back in the 70s, and we've been recording people here ever since, from Oasis to Robert Earl Keen. Um, people from all over the world have come in to, to be here. And uh, I'm going to talk you through uh, a few of my uses for this wonderful unit. Uh, my friend Tristan at uh, Rupert Neve Designs brought me a Portico 2 when they were first uh, coming out with them. And I had set it up in here and to do a recording just through the mic pre and just to see what it sounded like. M my uh, assistant at the time, Andre Moran, was here with me and we were listening and we thought something was going on with our subwoofer because all of a sudden everything was bigger than life. And we thought, wow, did, did someone knock this, the knob on the subwoofer or something? And um, apparently when we were setting it up, I had just, just touched one of these knobs ever so slightly and the sound was glorious. And so we both looked at each other and said, well, that's a good introduction right there to the, to the channel. Uh, we ended up putting it through its paces and trying uh, all the credible features on it. And uh, it's now kind of our go-to mic preamp um, channel strip in the studio. When I was mixing a record for uh, Norwegian artist Hans Gord, I came across a bass part that was uh, problematic because it had a, a very clicky, clicky pick noise to it. It was done with a pick. It, it doesn't really sit in the track the way I want it to sit. So um, what I did with it was I ran it through the Neve channel. And I'm going to uh, take you step by step through how I did that. What I did was to use the Portico 2 channel and optimizing the DS function. I picked a frequency that's uh, right in the 4.8 area. And uh, I've engaged it so that um, it, it steps in and trims that, that 4.8 frequency. And then I compensated with a little extra EQ, giving me... Uh, I'm going to play you first the first demonstration, uh, and then I will show you the process. I also added a little bit of uh, harmonic distortion with the silk blue setting right here. And uh, when it fits back into the track, I've got uh, something that's not clacky and actually has a little bottom end to it as well. I recently did a project with Ryan D. White out of uh, Boulder, Colorado, an EP called uh, Something Brilliant is About to Happen. I'm going to step through the one of the things that I did with this project uh, where I used the Portico 2 in link mode for mastering. On something like this, which is more of a rock project, I'll use a faster release, which is the feed forward design that uh, Rupert has incorporated in the unit. Uh, if you press this in, you get a feedback uh, response from the unit, which is a bit of a slower, uh, everything slower, the attack slower, the release, more of a, uh, like an old vintage 33609. Uh, I have a relatively low threshold rate, and then I'm using the blend function to bring me some of the original dry signal uh, back into the mix so that uh, I'm doing a little parallel compression with the unit. I'm also utilizing the side chain function out of the back of the unit. I'm uh, side chaining to my AMEC 9098 and I'm filtering out all the lows because I liked the low end in the original mix. I wanted to retain it. As a matter of fact, um, 
I want it to accentuate it somewhat. So I don't want the compressor hitting when the, when, with the bass. I want it hitting with the high-end information. I'm also utilizing a little bit of the wonderful EQ in the Portico 2s by uh, bringing in some mid-range and also bringing up uh, 60 hertz, uh, which I uh, am not filtering out with the high-pass filter on this particular track. Um, I needed some of that, that big bottom to show up. This is the track from that record, just a little snippet uh, to show you what I've done. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about this wonderful product at rupertneve.com. Uh, thank you to Rupert Neve Designs for doing this. You can find more about me at markholmanmusic.com or congresshouse.com. I've got addictions and you have concerns.